What do you know about Lance's positive test for EPO that was then covered up? Yeah, that happened uh, in June of 2001. We were doing a warm-up race for the Tour de France. It was called the Tour of Switzerland. I, I knew Lance was taking EPO during the tour. He, he told me what he was doing. He was doing small amounts, Mike called microdosing. There was an EPO test then, but he was doing small amounts that was gonna cl clear his system in time for a, you know, a, a test the next day. And I don't know what exactly happened, if he just took too much or, you know. But he told me, I believe it was the morning after stage number eight, um, that he had a positive test for EPO. And it was, he kind of said it with a nervous laugh, but kind of chuckled after with, said that it was gonna be taken care of, that no worries. The calls to the right people were gonna be made and this test was gonna just disappear. So did I know it was, there was some corruption going on within the sport? Absolutely, but at the time it was working out for me. So um, I didn't complain, let's just put it that way. What did that tell you about the state of the sport? It's corrupt. No other way to, still is. How yeah, so? Uh, I mean, there's some of the same bad apples that were running the sport back then are still involved in the sport today. And what sorts of things have gone on previously that you're aware of that, you know, would yeah, lead I mean, you to believe it's corrupt? Uh, Lance and I were, team, were, were no longer teammates. I was on a, I was his competitor. Um, it was, two, it was June of 2004, and another Tour de France warm-up race. This was in France, um, and it was on this uh, famous climb called Mount Ventoux. It was a, we had a time trial that went, like, what was it, um, like 15 or 16 miles straight uphill to the top of this, the giant of Provence, and uh, that's what they called this climb. And at the top there, I, I, I placed second on the stage behind a Spanish rider, and I, um, and I almost caught Lance, which, who started two minutes ahead of me. And I don't think he was very pleased about that. He, um, so he, he, from what I had heard, made a call at the, straight after he finished to the UCI, the governing body of the sport, and said, you know, this is not normal. He, this guy's riding too fast. Tyler's riding too fast. You gotta get him. So, so, you know, so he, I didn't know that at the time that he made that phone call, but. And even though he but, had been using illegal performance enhancing drugs, just like you were, he, he felt like he should still call and inform the governing body of the sport of your wrongdoing? Maybe the performance enhancing drugs were working too well on me, I don't know. A couple hours later, you know, I'm on the massage table at the hotel and uh, the team doctor comes into the room kind of with a strange look on his face and, and tells, tells me that he got a call from the governing body of the sport, the UCI, and they want to meet with me uh, in a few days after the race is finished. So the race finished on Sunday, and, and instead of going back home to, uh, to Spain, it was off to Switzerland. And uh, I was kind of warned and gave a sort of slap on the hand. But there was, you know, no positive test. They, you know, they thought that I was doping, but it was basically a little scare tactic. And it sure scared me, so, you know, Lance said, you know, slow this guy down, it certainly did. And what was said? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I was pissed, I was pissed. I told him I didn't appreciate what he was doing. You know, I, I also heard rumors within the Peloton that Lance had been, uh, you know, just talking, talking about me. And I didn't appreciate that. I had a lot of friends in the Peloton, and so it, it came full circle. It came back to me. So how, how and I called him out on it. I said, there are people talking in this Peloton and telling me stuff that you're talking is stuff that, about. Is that how you said it? Yeah, with a little few F-bombs and a few choice words. And um, he, he did not, right away he denied it, but wanted to know who told, who told me this. So. You don't believe Lance should have won seven consecutive Tour de France titles. Um, why not? If everybody was clean at the same level, on bread and water, so to speak, um, no. Because 
he might have won one or two, maybe, I don't know. But, I mean, uh, the doping affects everybody differently. And the more, you know, the more money you have, the more connections you have, the more advantage it is to you. Um, so a lot of people s say, oh, well, if everybody's doping, it's an even playing field. But it's not. It's not. You know, it takes a lot of money. It takes a lot of pe people power. It takes a lot of um, connections, you know. You know, for example, having a private jet, you know, it's way easier to get a bag of blood into France on a private jet than, than um, you know, another mode of transportation. Um, let's just put it that way. He had con I mean, I'd say the majority of the cyclists back then took EPO to some degree. Um, but it took money to, to be able to blood dope. It took connections. How many titles do you think Lance should have won? Before the 99 tour, he had done four Tour de France's. And I believe he only finished one out of the four. And he had never, um, he had never had any, any, a whole lot of success in riding for the overall classification. If you look at all the hard mountain stages in his first four Tour de France's, you know, Lance was nowhere to be seen. I don't know. So... I don't think he would have won seven Tour de France's. I think that's fair to say.